Downhill star Jordan Williams says he hates pedaling, but even in gravity focused disciplines like downhill, pedaling is crucial. Now, if you like Jordan, you try and avoid it as much as possible, or you like going out and spinning the pedals on an all day epic ride, here are some tips to help you save energy, be more comfortable, get the most out of that pedaling and get you twirling those pedals like a pro. So to help you guys understand a bit more and build that nice, smooth, professional pedaling style, I've broken it down into three steps today. The first of which is purely focused on the mechanics of moving your legs around in a nice, smooth style. The second is taking it off-road onto loose surfaces and getting that power applied well to the trail. And the third is marrying it with technical riding, mixing in with other aspects that complicate our riding out in the woods, and then we're gonna put it all together. To start things off then, pedaling well. And by this, I mean, you want to be turning your feet in nice smooth circles with a consistent solid body position, so not rocking around and making sure your hips are pretty static. If you do find that maybe you're getting a bit of side to side movement, the seat height is a great place to start. After this, make sure you watch my video, of course, but afterwards, check out Anna's video on GMBN Tech of how to set your seat at the right height and identify any problems. To develop that smooth pedaling style, we wanna be thinking about moving our feet in circles rather than up and down, so no dead spots in the stroke, just turning the pedals over and not wasting too much energy by that jerky action. To do this, you're using your quads to power the pedals down, your hamstrings and glutes to scrape the dirt off your shoes and tuck those pedals down through the bottom and up, and then your hip flexors to lift your knees up and help your feet go over the top. And there's three stages, I think, that can help to build this style. Practice pedaling in a low cadence, that's pretty slowly in a big gear, in order to slow things down and help you identify where you need to be putting the power in. You build those brain links to recruit the right muscle groups at each point in the stroke. It helps you realize where you've got the dead spots. So by slowing it all down, you can put that all together on the bike. Next, you want to do some high cadence works, pedal as fast as possible, concentrate on lifting your legs up and just spin. Finally, if you are using clipless pedals, doing some single leg drills and just pedaling around with one foot can really hammer home like how easily we can just end up pressing down on the pedals and not using the rest of that circular motion. So bring it just to a single leg drill can help you develop that rotational style. Building that smooth style is great, but you're not always going to be sat in the saddle just spinning the pedals away on a smooth fire road. So learning how to apply that power on a loose, slippery surface like a real world trail is really helpful. One exercise that's really good to do to boost your understanding of how to lay out the power on a loose surface is finding a steep gravel muddy climb and then learning how to sprint up that without wheel spinning but going the fastest you can. So it's about smoothing out your standard pedaling action, not yanking on the bars too much, lifting your feet up as well as stamping down and then you get that rear tire feel of how much you can push without spinning the back wheel and that really helps in all situations when you're trying to get the max out of your pedaling. The next mountain bike specific pedaling action that I want to highlight is using an exaggeratedly slow and steady pedaling action in loose, boggy, wet and slippery terrain. So you shift your hips back and use a higher gear than normal, engage those glutes in the way that you've practiced during the low cadence work and that helps your rear wheel grip more because it's more weighted and you're not moving in a jerky way so you don't slide out and you power through the bog. Something I think the top riders do really well is understanding how to combine that great pedaling action and the knowledge of how to get out on loose surfaces with more technical trail features and how to integrate that into all their riding. Sometimes putting in a little bit of extra energy is important before you reach somewhere maybe you can't pedal when you need that momentum to make it up a bank or a ditch, challenging technical section, and you won't be able to use your legs to get you out of trouble. So look well ahead, try and predict where you can build speed, put the cranks in and you don't get caught out scrabbling like a crab stuck on the bank and not being able to pedal. In contrast, in some high speed situations, and you see the top downhillers are really good at this, they're able to tuck, save energy and recover. It's not in somewhere where it's too fast to pedal, you could pedal, but that energy could be expended better later in the track, so just take the time to get down out of the wind and recover. As well as knowing when and when not to pedal, it's important to think about when not to pedal hard. So if you're pulling away either in a race start or maybe here trying to build up the speed for the jumps, as you move your chain down the block, it's feeling that the timing of the shifts and just micro easing off as the chain jumps between the sprockets basically helps you get that power down, doesn't ruin your drivetrain. So each rear derailleur can shift at a slightly different speed. So learning that for your bike and setup, and then so you're not easing off for ages, but you just feel the chain jump and then away you go. It's really good. Another timing-based pedaling skill is being able to move the bike and pump through the trail whilst you don't stop pedaling. So this can be really useful in like BMX tracks, pump tracks, forecross tracks, as well as out on natural terrain when you have ups and downs and you want to still be on the gas. So it's about isolating 
different movements on the bike. So use your upper body, your arms and your hips to pump the bike and then your legs to keep the pedals turning. You see this, uh, the top riders are able to flick the bike around, wheelie over stuff, kind of move through transitions, but their, their head is actually thinking about what the trail's doing ahead and they're just never off the gas. A good way to practice this would be on a pump track, such as we've got here in the Forest of Dean. It's just a straight set of rollers. There's not too much going on. You can just practice pedaling the bike and letting it naturally move through the rollers. And once you get the hang of that, you can start trying to pedal and pump the bike through the rollers at the same time. You kind of get that feeling of moving the bike as your feet are going round. And that is just really key for getting this skill. The final piece in the puzzle of learning to pedal professionally, I think, is uh, getting the power out really well on rough terrain. So in contrast to the previous tip, we were moving the bike around while pedaling along. This is about kind of letting the ground move the bike while continuing to pedal well. And I think it's something that honestly you have to go and practice a little bit to so find somewhere rough and just be out of the saddle or seated, learning how that's going to affect you and finding that balance of staying loose and relaxed enough to let the bike absorb the terrain while also not completely letting go of it and getting bucked offline everywhere. And it's that ability to sort of smoothly power over stuff while absorbing it is a really useful skill. And this, honestly, I think I've just learned over the years and it's, it's really helped me feel zippy and fast while riding cross country. And that is what you want to be. At the risk of overcomplicating something actually quite simple, that feels like a lot to think about. However, I reckon a lot of these skills you're probably doing already without realising, so it's good just to simplify it all, drill it down to the basics and help you build on that strong platform. So I hope everyone watching enjoyed the video and found something useful today. Stay tuned for more skills and techniques and I'll see you next time.